warning stickers. I'm excited. Now I've reviewed quite a few portable power stations on the channel, but I'm actually genuinely excited about this one. This is the DJI Power 1000 portable power station, and I'm gonna go through what you get in the pack. We're gonna put it through its paces, and then we're gonna have a chat about battery safety and why I reckon this one's got a few features you should probably think about. Now packaging wise, you get your usual bits of foam and plastic bag. Fair enough, at least the cardboard box is recyclable. But what's most impressive about this is that all you get in the box is your power station and a wall socket cord. It's ready to go. You don't need countless adapters just to get the thing to work. Now it's got a fast charge time of 70 minutes. So let's get this thing plugged in and have a look at a few of the accessories that they have sent me to have a look at to make this thing work out in the field. The good news is it's just a standard kettle plug and unfortunately they've stuck with the industry standard of making the little flap on the front really difficult to remove. So you'll have to kind of be really gentle as you lever it out of the way or you'll break it off. Stick your kettle plug in, 70 minutes later on fast charge, 100% charged. Now there's something worth pointing out. I've got this thing going on rapid charge. It's been sitting here on the bench for about 10 minutes charging away. And I'm just gonna pull the microphone off, have a listen. Silence. This is because the DJI cooling fan is twice as large as most other portable power stations out there. And so it makes much less noise. In fact, it makes less noise than the fridge in your house. Now, accessories wise, there are a few and these don't come in the standard pack. You can get this little lunch bag here, which is a padded insulated carry bag with pockets for adapters and accessories so that you can keep your power station safe. I think if you're gonna take this thing out in the field with you like I am, or if you're gonna go camping, that's absolutely a winner. And none of the other power stations I've tried have ever come with something like this. They've also given me a set of solar panels. We'll take them outside later on and see how they perform. And a couple of other accessories. We've got a car charging jack, and we've also got an adapter so that it will work with the solar panels. So that's oh, a bit inconvenient. You've got to get the solar panels and an adapter. They don't just plug straight in, but I haven't reviewed a power station yet that has a straight plug-in for solar panels. And I'd love to see that developed on the market. Now, while we're on the subject of charging, I've hooked up the solar panels and it didn't take too long. A couple of snap hooks, they fold straight out. Stands are built in. Cables built in the back in a little pocket that zips away neatly. You add your little adapter to the solar panels, plug that into the front of the machine and it turns on automatically. Now the battery's on 69%. Let's go have a cup of tea for half an hour and we'll see how much energy it puts into the battery with one set of solar panels. Uh, it's been 34 minutes, so I got distracted and we're up to 73%. So we've increased the charge by 4% in 35 minutes which is kind of what I came to expect from solar panels with power stations. You really need several of these power arrays hooked up through your adapter to make a noticeable difference to the power in the power station in a short period of time. As they are, the panels will keep pace with a small car fridge or something like that if you're running it while camping, so they're fine. Um, but if you're really relying on charging this off-grid just from solar power and you want to make sure that you consistently get the power station charged before the nighttime load demands, get yourself a few of these solar panels. While we're talking solar panels, remember that slightly annoying adapter that I was speaking about at the start? Well, it turns out you can plug three solar panels into each adapter. And because there's two connection points for adapters, that means you can run up to six solar panels per power station. Now that's gonna charge your batteries really fast and it's probably a good reason for the adapter. Oh, and while we're on the adapter, turns out there's a mounting point on the side of the power station so you don't lose it. Now, if you're like me and you fly a lot of DJI drones, you're gonna love this feature. 
the power station's been optimised to charge them faster than they use batteries in flight. So you'll never run out of batteries again if you're in the field and you charge your drone with this. That's not bad. Landing. In terms of inputs and outputs with this power station, it's pretty simple and easy to understand. This third is all about inputs, whether it be from your wall socket or your 12 volt or solar panel adapters. This third here is all about USB. So you've got two USBs and two USB-C outlets. This will even charge a MacBook Pro fast. Then over this third, you've got your two wall sockets that you'd plug your normal appliances into. They haven't gone overboard. They haven't given you four or six wall sockets because with a battery of this size, look, they could put them there, but it would trip out all the time. There's no point. They've stayed conservative and I like that because it will look after the lifespan of the battery. Let's put this to some use and see what it can and can't do. Start out with cut. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but it was not only powering this old school large circular saw, but it was jamming in the cut all the way through because stupidly, of course, I'm trying to cut through a pellet for some firewood. Grind. Caffeinate. Come on, baby. I need you. Perfect. Some kind of crazy herbal concoction. Come on. Yeah, I'm not drinking that. Now, if you have a careful look at the display on this power station, um, it tells an interesting story. These things are really good for emergency supply backup. They're really good for keeping you going with your computers, your IT, your internet, that sort of thing. And we'll get to that in a minute. But if you're going to hit them hard like we have with a circular saw, then an angle grinder, then a coffee maker, and then a kettle, have a look, we've already taken about 10% of the charge out of the battery. The other thing is, if you keep walloping it like that, you will, regardless of how well built any of these battery power supplies are, you will shorten their lifespan. These guys really aren't designed to run your house, boil your kettle six times a day, that sort of thing. They really are designed to charge other things, keep a good backup power supply, and overcome interruptions. Now let's talk about interruptions. The Power 1000 really comes into its own in your home office, and I reckon that's where you should store it. You see, it'll also work as a UPS, or an uninterrupted power supply. If you plug this into the mains, and then plug your internet router, or your computer, or whatever you don't want to turn off when the power goes out, into it, it'll sit there idling away, and if the power goes out within 0.02 seconds, it'll switch in, save your data, save your internet connection, and maintain a seamless connection with the world. With privatised power companies, thanks very much, Rodney, we now know that every time the wind blows, we're gonna lose the power. This is your solution. Now, under the hood in this battery, we're gonna to have to take DJI's word for it, because not even I'm stupid enough to open the thing. They have lithium ferrophosphate batteries, which are not lithium ion batteries. Car manufacturers are going across to this battery technology at the moment as well. It turns out it's lighter, it's safer, and it holds more charge. So it's current technology with batteries. But the most important thing safety-wise, and you've probably all seen the scooter fires and the electronic bike fires in apartment buildings these days, 
is the control software. So what you don't probably think about too much is that there's a computer inside each one of these power supplies and that runs specific code. Now DJI runs their own code, that's why it's optimized to run with DJI drones so well. But that means that they've been very conservative in what they'll allow these batteries to do and what they won't allow them to do, which means that this should be quite a safe power supply. And with a frame that can withstand 100 kilos in weight, it's pretty strong too. So summing it up, it's powerful to cope with most of the things that you'd expect of it. It'll work as a UPS sitting on your desk at home when you're not actively using it. It's manufactured by a reputable brand with good quality computer programs running it to make it safe. It's strong and it comes with a range of accessories that are really well thought out and make this a really great option for just about anyone. I'm gonna be using this in a future trip going around most of New South Wales, including the Outback, and I'm gonna be relying on it to charge my gear for a whole week. So look out for an update on this on my social media and images of the trip. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the channel or you miss out on great reviews like this. Who would have thought DJI would come out with something so good for their first offering?